Terrace Martin and James Fauntleroy's Nova is one of the illest, most brilliant, dopest, incredible, whatever adjective you could think of to describe this album, that's exactly what it was in the year of 2023. Usually, you know, I try to take my time with reviews when it comes to new releases. And you know, I'm, I'm kind of quick, but man, I had to take my time with this record specifically. And I'm glad I did, because there are things that I'm still discovering when it comes to this record, even today. As I say in every video where I'm talking about Terrace Martin, this guy has been the most consistent artist of 2023. He has released eight projects, including Nova, and all of them, all of them slap. Absolutely heat. The rollout for this record specifically was just dope as heck to me. Between Terrace and James Fauntleroy, you would see these posts containing these images of products. And products such as a cologne, a credit card, a water, different variations of things. But with these products contain these deep, heavy messages. For example, one being attention, the other one being void. Matter of fact, even one being water. To coincide with the whole thing of being thirsty <laughs> in this day and age when it comes to looking at what we see on the internet and just in society in general. And I know there was some humor to that, but knowing these cats, there's something, there's gotta be a message that coincides with it that is supposed to make you think in some way. And going back to like the humor and just the power in it, it, it you know, that same thing lies in the disclaimer. The niggas are real, but the product isn't. And I feel like that statement, that disclaimer was put there as like a self-reflective thing for people who are looking at the internet in this way and saying like, yo, I have to chase that. Yo, I gotta go for that. And it's like, yo, none of those things really matter in the grand scheme of things. And no pun intended at all, but what a way to use the format of marketing, advertising, to push this thing to draw attention to the art. To me, this record feels like the same way DJ Quick marketed Rhythmalism, 70 minutes of commercial free music. That's the type of vibe that I sort of gather with this record in a way. This album is a bossa nova record, but it's not just really that in my opinion. It's funk, it's soul, R&B, it's all of that rolled up into one. For so long, Terrace and James Fauntleroy were supposed to work together, and Fauntleroy being a bossa nova head, they felt like it was the perfect time to create a record and create a record with that vibe. Terrace Martin, without a doubt, is one of the greatest artists, musicians, producers of our time. And the only reason why I'm gonna put this type of connection in comparison is because it's like, just in case somebody's watching this and they're trying to figure out who the heck is Terrace Martin. Terrace Martin is the Quincy Jones of this time. That's how special he is. But I don't even wanna box them in in that way because it's like Terrace Martin's gift is Terrace Martin. There's a reason why To Pimp a Butterfly is one of the greatest albums of all time. That album does not get made the way it gets made without Terrace Martin, hands down. And Kendrick Lamar himself will tell you that. You know, of course, along with cats like Thundercat, Soundwave, but Terrace freaking Martin is one of the gods, period. His ability to always pull in the right musicians and artists to contribute to something, to make something that's so beautiful, needs to be talked about. The reason why I know James Fauntleroy. My introduction to James Fauntleroy was because of Kendrick's To Pimp a Butterfly how much a dollar costs. And I gotta say, man, because of the Nova record, 
I've really become fascinated with who James Fauntleroy is. Like, son, I had no idea. I had no idea the amount of joints that this man helped co-write. The stuff he did with Bruno, Beyonce, Drake, Justin. Listen, when I was in the 10th grade in 2013, when Suit and Tie came out, that was my jam. That song was in heavy rotation. And it's like, I had no idea that this guy had something to do with it. Matter of fact, I'm going to be real with you. I thought James Fauntleroy was a white guy. <laughs> I thought that was a white guy singing the whole time on how much a dollar cost. But the connection that Terrace and James Fauntleroy have, man, is definitely like some Shaq and Kobe stuff for sure. Man, when I heard online shopping, I don't know how long it took me. It might have taken me days just to move past that track to listen to the whole entire project. Just the Bossa Nova vibe and just every element and detail of that track is absolutely perfection. Mad hypnotic. Even just the first 10 seconds, just that whole <laughs> like that part right there, I could not move past it for a good minute. Y'all know me, I, whenever I do reviews, y'all hear that's like my guilty pleasure. I'm always pressing that rewind button. I could not get past the 11, 12 second mark of that song because of the first 10 seconds of online shopping. And James's vocals, man, it's just so smooth. The lyrics, the perspective that he brings to this song is definitely one of the reasons why he's one of the dopest songwriters in the game right now. And Terrace's saxophone plan going into like the 220 mark of the song, man, that joy had me losing my mind. It's just so many elements that's just lie in this song, man, that is just incredible. Easily, without a doubt, and I keep saying without a doubt because that's how special this project is. This is easily one of not just the greatest songs to come out this year, but it is one of the greatest songs to come out this decade. Songs like Witchcraft and Butterfly Effect continue with that bossa nova vibe. Even like it like that as well, but it goes more into this funk route. To me, this track feels like this. If Maurice White was still here and he wanted to produce another Earth, Wind & Fire album, he would be calling Terrace Martin to produce something like this. Like that whole, the only one, feels like something in the vein of Brazilian rock. Like when you hear that song and you hear the body up part, like that spirit along with the only one thing, it's something there. It's all connected. I hope that makes sense. Chocolate for dinner is another cold joint. The whole chocolate connection is just absolutely brilliant. In a way, it's like it has this sort of dirty humor clever thing to it you know chocolate being you know candy food however you want to look at it but connecting to the woman and just never getting enough of her and i think the solo that we hear is a trumpet i'm almost a hundred percent sure that it's a trumpet and the trumpet solo is being played by Keon Harrell, who is one of the illest to ever do it. Then you got Terrace Martin, who does what he does best on the keys towards the end. Then the record ends with an instrumental where you have Terrace Martin just letting his saxophone absolutely just breathe and shine all throughout the track. Now, Terrace, let me know if I'm tripping, but it kind of sounds like the saxophone riff that you do at some point is very reminiscent to the saxophone riff that's on Insane on that dinner party joint. Let me know, uh, cause I heard it and I was like, dang, that sounds very similar to something Terrace did. And I went back to Insane and I heard it and I was like, mm, I don't know. It kind of, there's some parallels there. Yeah, this album, and I know it's not really an album, it's considered to be an EP. And I'm just being honest, I really don't like the whole EP label, just to be honest. I'm young as heck, for sure. 
but I guess there's that old soul that lies in me that's like why are we calling projects like this a uh, EP? Why? Just because it has six songs on it? Some of my favorite records of all time are the Time records. And like the Time's first debut album, you know, the stuff that Morris Day and Prince were doing. Like, yo, those albums are six songs long. Nova is an album. All right. And this album is absolutely one of the ones. I don't know if my album of the year list will come before this or after. I kind of want to drop them all in the same day. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to come out. But you might want to pay attention to that video. You might see this album in the mix somewhere. You never know. But man, this album is absolutely one of the ones and i'll be really honest with you there's only a few people that could get me in a hurry to say okay i gotta buy their physical product like i gotta cop the cd i gotta cop the vinyl i gotta even cop the cassette terrace martin is definitely one of those people and this project yo terrace we need all them joints on vinyl and yo Shout out to James Fauntleroy for creating the gold version of that artwork as well. Yo, we might need a vinyl version of that as well. Also, I hope and pray that this album wins the Grammy for Best Progressive R&B Album. It's in the category with some heavy hitters, but hey man, I've seen some crazy stuff take place with the Grammys. And, you know, as much as I want to see that album specifically win it, along with the fact that that's actually James Fauntleroy's first Grammy nomination as an artist. So shout out and salute to him. This album not winning, it, it doesn't take away from its greatness at all. For it to be nominated, that's already enough because the Academy recognizes real. And trust me, I want to see them win. I want to see Terrace take home another one. See James Fauntleroy take one as an artist. Because, son, this project, even just right now, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. That is one of the most dopest things that I've ever heard in my life. I think about what it was like to be living in the 50s and 60s where you got cats like John Coltrane, Thelonious Monk, Herbie, you know, releasing some of the most greatest stuff at that time. Prolific periods. I wasn't even born. But yo, you got somebody like Kamasi Washington, Terrace Martin, Keon Harold, Robert Glasper, so on and so on, man. Just dropping some of the most beautiful music ever. And this is why like, I wanted to do this video to celebrate it. And I saw Man, I need to move to LA. <laughs> I saw that they're actually releasing a live album on this record. So you mean to tell me I get to hear online shopping live? Very much so needed. We need that. Ace. Yeah, man, that's pretty much it. I forgot to say, please like, comment, and subscribe. Especially if you're new here. Share this video, it don't matter, with an uncle, auntie, cousin, friend, girlfriend, boyfriend, any type of friend, it don't matter. We are on our way to 1K, man. We're just continuing to build the community when it comes to real music. No negativity, please. That is a no-no here. Yeah, man, I think that's pretty much it. I am rooting for terrorists. I am really locked in on Mr. Fauntleroy and his work now. Yeah, man, I need to see a Terrace Martin show, like, ASAP. <laughs> I need to, yeah, I need to get to New York or LA one of these days when he's doing something. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. If you've heard this record, share your thoughts with me. Lock in with your boy. Let's have a conversation about it. And, yeah, man, like the video, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Until then, much love. God bless you. Peace.